The following accounts are true stories, submitted by the people who experienced them. Given their paranormal nature, I ask you to please listen with an open mind, remembering that it's taken a lot of courage for these people to share their stories. To begin, I have to say I am a Mormon, and when we Mormons get to the ages 19 to 21, most of us will undergo two years of service for our church. The story I'm about to share happened to me and a friend while we were on a service mission for the church, and those events made me realize there is a world that exists right next to ours, and if you go looking for things, you will definitely find them, but what you find may not be pleasant. We were on a service mission in Port-au-Prince, Haiti for six months, and during that time we were doing a lot of what we call tracting, which basically means we go out door to door to preach. While doing this, we noticed an abandoned school building, and we frequently passed by it several times during the months we were there. So, one day, my friend asked me what was wrong with the building, because both of us could sense an eerie atmosphere around the place. I explained to him what I had heard, that the school building had apparently been abandoned because it was haunted by ghosts and other spirits, hence students couldn't study there. My friend said he would like to bless the building to get rid of all the evil spirits. I was a bit scared but told him it would be great if we could do that. So we agreed to come back the next day and bless the building. Remember that we were both new missionaries who were excited to use our priesthood to achieve amazing things. The following day we went to the building, but I started feeling very uneasy, and I told my friend that we should just leave the building alone. He mocked me and said I was just being afraid, but even so I still could not bring myself to enter the building. He left me outside and went into the building and blessed it, and after a while he came back out looking triumphant and happy. Seems like it was a mission accomplished, so we went back to our apartment to shower and get ready for our daily tracting. My friend got in the shower first, and while he was bathing, I decided to call our mission president and tell him about how we blessed the old school building. I was expecting we would receive praise from our mission president. Instead, he started yelling, scolding me, and said I should keep an eye on my friend always and that none of us should take off his garments, that he was on his way coming to meet us immediately. But my friend was taking a shower, so he must have taken off his garment, and he had been in the bathroom for too long and was too quiet, so I decided to go check on him. What I saw will haunt me for the rest of my life. I found my friend dead on the bathroom floor. He had slit both his eyes, his wrists, and his throat with a blade. For those who don't know, our Mormon garments are sacred to us and offer protection, kind of like the Catholic cross. So apparently, after blessing the school building, what was protecting us was our garments, but as soon as my friend took off his to take a shower, he became vulnerable to what seems like the evil spirits from the school, and so they attacked him. By the time our mission president got to our apartment, it was already too late. I learned a bitter lesson from that experience. There are some things that are best left undisturbed. This story happened to me when I was still a teenager. I had a wonderful boyfriend at the time, but he had this very bizarre attitude. He had experienced numerous paranormal encounters, yet for some odd reason, he insisted on trying to explain everything with reason and logic. According to him, there were no spirits, demons, or even God. It was very annoying because his whole life was full of paranormal experiences, yet somehow he chose not to believe in the paranormal, and he would argue endlessly to prove he was right. One day we were in his room at his parents' house, and we had gotten into a discussion about the paranormal. I decided to tell him an old story I had heard of, a story that had no loopholes for him to use and argue against. I will not narrate the story here, otherwise this submission will be too long, but mainly because the horror we experienced that day seems to be linked to the story. The most I would say is that it is a story about an ancient evil spirit which attacked several different people, and a lot of other pieces of evidence were presented in the story. So I thought the fact that because there were several witnesses to these events, my boyfriend could not argue against it. However, he still argued, and while we were arguing, I noticed there was a slight change in the atmosphere. The change was subtle, but I'm quite sensitive, so I noticed. But I was so immersed in the argument that I just ignored the feeling and kept arguing with my boyfriend. But the feeling intensified. It was like an evil pressure that kept increasing and increasing. At some point it felt like we were not alone in the room anymore, and at that point I was having difficulty following the argument because I couldn't coherently arrange my ideas. 
Then suddenly my boyfriend stopped talking. His face became really pale, and he said in a really frightened voice, Do you feel that? I said yes, and he became even paler. We decided to leave the room and go outside for some fresh air, hoping to escape that evil atmosphere. My two sisters were in the downstairs, and we walked past them, telling them we were going for a walk. But they kept looking at us bizarrely, and oddly enough they seemed distant, like they were not really there, like they were on another side like in a mirror. My boyfriend and I went outside, but that evil atmosphere followed us. I was really worried not just about the evil atmosphere that was following us, but also because we seemed detached from our surroundings. The trees, the houses, other people, the street, the cars driving by. Everything seemed like they were on a different dimension, almost like they were on a screen. I turned to ask my boyfriend if he was experiencing the same thing too, but noticed he couldn't hear me. I called out to him but he did not respond, so I reached out my hand to touch him to see if I could get his attention like that, but he started running, so fast and so scared, like something was chasing him. I tried to call out to him, but no matter how much I shouted he couldn't hear me, and it seemed none of the passers-by could hear me either, although some of them kept looking at me bizarrely. And to my utter horror, my boyfriend ran into the street and was knocked down by a car. I screamed, I shouted, and ran to him. He was unconscious. Other passers-by also gathered, and together we called emergency services. He was rushed to the hospital, and thankfully he recovered. He later told me that he started running because he could see a dark, very scary entity chasing him, and all he could see around him was darkness and old buildings that were all in ruins, so he could not see anything in this world at that time. I also later realized that when the car ran him over and I rushed to him, that evil atmosphere disappeared, and that feeling of being cut off from this reality was also gone. It's been many years since we had that experience and we are no longer together, but we're still close friends, and every once in a while we talk about those events. What we've concluded based on our understanding of those events is that while arguing about the paranormal story I told my then boyfriend, we somehow invited an evil spirit, probably the evil spirit of the story. And that was possible maybe because of how much emotion we were putting in the argument, or maybe just because my then boyfriend somehow always attracted paranormal occurrences, even though he kept arguing against them. After that event, however, he stopped arguing against the paranormal. I had recently moved into a new apartment in Akiti, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and I was returning home one evening from work when I encountered something I would never forget. It was around 11 p.m., and I was walking along a footpath when I heard footsteps behind me. Clearly this person was in a hurry, because the footsteps were approaching really quickly, so I stepped aside to let the person pass, because the footpath was very narrow. However, I did not see anybody. Instead, I saw something that looked like a mass of fog floating toward me. I instantly had goosebumps, and this fog quickly engulfed me all around. It almost felt like I had been wrapped in a cloak of very cold fog, and there were voices, whispers coming from within the fog. Terrified, I screamed and ran away from there, and did not stop until I got home. It took me quite a while to fall asleep that night, but eventually I slept, and woke up the next morning feeling normal, like nothing had happened. However, this was just the beginning of my ordeal. The following night, I went to sleep and dreamt that I was back at that same spot where I saw the fog, and the fog had engulfed me, and dogs kept appearing from and disappearing into the fog, biting me ferociously as they did. I tried to defend myself as hard as I could, but the dogs were too fast and kept biting me. When I woke up the next morning, my body was full of bite wounds from dogs. I went to a local clinic and had the wounds treated. The local doctor at the clinic was shocked at seeing the bite wounds and asked me if I had been attacked by a whole host of dogs. The following night, I dreamt again that I was back at that same spot and the fog had engulfed me yet again. And this time, it was cats that kept appearing and disappearing from the fog, scratching me as they did. When I woke up in the morning, my entire body was full of scratches from cats. This continued for the next few days. And then one day, I slept. And yet again, I was back at that same spot, engulfed in that evil fog, and a poisonous snake emerged from the fog and bit my leg. When I woke up the following morning, I found that my leg was swollen and discolored, looking like it had been poisoned. At this point I had had enough, 
I visited a medicine man, a traditional priest. He consulted with his spirits and revealed to me that I had become a victim of a territorial spirit. He explained to me that the area through which I passed the night I saw the fog has a little forest close by that is infested by evil spirits and that people generally avoid using that road during the late hours of the night. Of course, I didn't know this because I was new to the area. The priest did some traditional rituals on me and prepared some potions for me to take home with. He basically expelled that evil spirit from my life, and since then I stopped having those dreams of being attacked by different animals in the fog. Also, I learned my lesson and never used that road at all, not just at night. What this experience has taught me is that whenever you move to a new area, try and find out about the area, and not just carry on with your life like there is no care in the world. I am a regular hiker and have been hiking from the time I was a teenager, so I am always very comfortable and confident on hiking trails. However, something happened to me two years ago that really troubled me. Actually, it happened to me and a friend. I had decided to go hiking in the forest of Brosilianda, and a friend of mine decided to join me. We were both married and sometimes used our hiking trips to escape from our wives. We were also quite excited because the forest of Brosilianda is quite a historic forest with lots of attractions to explore. But nothing could have prepared us for what we would encounter there. We set off hiking, and after a few hours of walking, we found a clearing that we figured would allow for a good amount of moonlight at night. We decided to set up camp there. We got a lantern going and settled down because it was already getting dark. And as we sat there discussing, we heard movements in the nearby bushes. At first we ignored it, assuming it must be some small forest animal. But when the rustling continued, we decided to check it out. We took our lanterns and headed out into the nearby bushes. And that's when we heard it. I heard my wife calling me from a distance that seemed close by. My friend also said he heard his wife calling him. I didn't hear his wife call though, and neither did he hear my wife call me. All I heard was my wife calling me and she sounded distressed. At that moment, the only thing I could think of was to find and help my wife. I felt this strong urge to save her because she was in danger. My friend also felt the same way about his wife, so we headed in the direction of the voice. We walked for about 30 minutes, but as we got closer to the voice, I started to feel like it wasn't really my wife. Yes, the voice was exactly hers, but there was something amiss, just like how two people can say exactly the same thing in exactly the same tone and voice, yet they can't sound exactly like each other. I felt like this really wasn't my wife but it was her voice, and we were so close to it now. Remember that while I was hearing my wife's voice calling me, what my friend was hearing was his wife's voice calling him. At this point, the voice sounded about five meters away, so we both slowed down, lanterns held up and on high alert, because by now we had both figured out that it wasn't really our wives calling us, but someone, or something that sounded like them and wanted us to believe it was them. Then, peeking around the corner of a tree, we saw two huge red glowing eyes staring at us. There was such intense malice in its stare, more intense than anything I've ever felt before. We both instinctively turned around to flee. We just wanted to get out of there. But as we turned, there it was, the red glowing eyes. Somehow it had instantly moved behind us, and what seemed like a dark mass just engulfed us and we both passed out. We only woke up in a hospital. Apparently we had been found unconscious on the forest floor and rushed to the hospital. Our wives, our real wives, were there with us when we woke up. To this day, we still don't know what that thing we encountered in that forest was. It was just one entity, but somehow when it called out, I heard my wife calling me and at the same time my friend heard his wife calling him. Before that experience, I never really gave much thought to the paranormal. But the experience made me realize there is more to this life than meets the eye. Thank you for watching, and thank you to all those who so courageously shared their stories with us today. If you enjoyed the video, then please like, share, and subscribe. And if you want more of our content, then please watch the videos suggested on the screen now. Until next time.